Hello everybody, this is Julie Kagawa and today we are here discussing everybody's favorite grumpy know-it-all furball, the one and only Grimalkin. Now, when I was first coming up with Grimalkin, um, Grimalkin is sort of the embodiment of every cat that I have ever known. I just took all the traits of a kitty and rolled them all up into one and that was Grimalkin. He is supposed to represent every cat. His boredom, his disdain, his superiority complex, he's a little bit lazy, he likes lying around, he doesn't do anything for free, so he is just the embodiment of every cat that I have ever known. Um, and that is how I came up with Grimalkin's personality. And anybody who has ever been owned by a cat would probably agree with me. Now, Grimm has been a staple of the Iron Face series from the beginning, from the very start, when Megan first lands in his tree and he demands a favor from her to take her to the summer court. Now, in later books, it is hinted that he was actually looking for her, or he actually expected her that day. How he knew she would appear at that moment in time, or how he even knew she was coming, nobody really knows, but that is all part of the mystery of Grimm. Grimm takes the role of the wise old guide in the Iron Face series. They need him there because he is there to point out the obvious. He is there to tell them where they need to go next. He is there to show them the way to the impossible. Well, of course I know where this hidden thing is. Of course I know where to find that particularly impossible item that has never been seen before. I am a cat. And nobody ever questions it. Because he is a cat, it's just expected that he knows pretty much everything about fairy and that that's his role in the, that was his role in the iron face series to know the impossible and to point the group in the right direction now grim has often been compared to the cheshire cat from alice in wonderland and though they share a lot of similarities mainly the ability to poof out of sight whenever they feel like it the inspiration for grim actually came from something called a ketchy and Akechi is simply a fairy cat uh, that haunts the Scottish Highlands. Now, the Akechi are also black cats with white spots on their chests. So that is not Grimm. Grimm is obviously gray, but he has been called Akechi through the book. And he shares a lot of similarities with the Akechi. So is he a Akechi or not? He's not telling and we might never know. One of the most consistent things about Grimalkin is his reaction to danger. And the group gets themselves into uh, dangerous situations a lot. So Grimm's reaction to danger is to just vanish. Something is coming, he disappears. And it's almost become a, a running joke now that if Grimalkin disappears, something dangerous is coming. And uh, throughout the series, it's just been kind of fun um, to see the group react. They'll be in a situation and someone will make the comment that, uh, Grimalkin has disappeared and then everybody immediately draws their weapons. So it's, it's been amusing to use Grimalkin to showcase that something dangerous is coming because somehow he always knows. Now, much like Mab, Puck, Titania, and Oberon, Grimalkin has actually appeared in Shakespeare. He has appeared in Macbeth, or should I say she has appeared in Macbeth when one of the witches calls out, I come, Grey Malkin, referring to her uh, familiar, which takes the form of a cat. And the word Grey Malkin comes from Grey Malkin, which means uh, grey, obviously the color, and Malkin, which basically means cat. So Grey Malkin literally means cat or grey cat or old grey cat. So the last remaining question is, what is Grimalkin? Is he a catchy? Is he a familiar? Or is he something completely unique? We may never know, and I think he would prefer it that way. But we do know this about him. He is a cat, and that is all that we need to know. So thank you for uh, joining me on this talk about our most mysterious uh, member of the Iron Fae team. I hope you enjoyed it. 
The next character talk, I think, is going to be about the rulers of Fairy, Oberon and Titania. So if you have any questions about them, leave them in the comments below and I will try to get to them in the next video. But as usual, thank you so much uh, for watching. If you liked this and if you like the series, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you again and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!